what's going on? This is another episode of Space Pod TV. I'm your host, Paley Invasion. We are here with Playboy Mickey. How's it going, bro? I'm doing good. How are you, man? Good, good. Hold on. We don't got no fucking... No headphone levels in here. Here, give me... S- talk again? Yeah, 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 yeah. Is your mic on? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> You're probably like, this is what a podcast sounds like? All right, I, I was guess. like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what brings you to the space pod? Um, I'm just here to, you know, introduce myself a little bit for people out there in this area that may or may not know who I am and kind of just give a little insight about what I got coming up. That cool. Kind of thing, so so uh, what kind of music do you do? Um, That's a great question. I do a lot, actually. I've gone from i started out mainly like like just straight Mm hip-hop and then lately i've been kind of experimenting with like a little more pop even like like latin and reggaeton so you'd say you're like an experimental type artist definitely okay definitely cool right so now what what would you say would be like some of your uh inspirations as far as like when you make your songs and stuff like that i just my mindset is really to just make the best thing possible or like mm-hmm. make it so it's infectious okay like addicting so you like try to get it down to a science definitely okay just like i had i try to imitate everyone i listen to mm-hmm. and i know people will say like oh you should find your own style you should try not to be like someone else yada yada like well you kind of have to, to it's kind of a give and take you know like it any artist, I guarantee, is drawing some kind of inspiration from some other artist, whether they want to admit it or not, you know? Yeah, and it's just, I've always been a very passionate person, and I think it shows into not just my music and my performances, too, when I'm on mm-hmm. stage, and pretty much anything I do. I never do anything, like, 50% or less than that. So do you have, like, all original compositions? Like, are you making your own beats, or...? I, I don't make my own beats, however... Like all the vocals that you hear in my music, that's that's all me. Okay. I, I do my own, a little of my own mixing, mm-hmm. my own mastering. Might not be the best, but I mean, there's always room for improvement. I feel like. Mm. And, uh, oh, always, yeah, for yeah. sure. And that's just watching tutorials early on definitely helped. Mm-hmm. So like to, and you can hear it too, and like you can hear the growth mm-hmm. like with each album. I got like three. Three albums, okay. Currently, working on four coming soon. But you can definitely, if you start from the first one, you can definitely hear the growth, the sound, it progression, you know, because everything, I, it was just trial and error. Yeah, because that's one thing, like some artists kind of don't, they don't like that when they have all that, you know, older music right. sitting around and they're like, oh, that's not really the image anymore, man. Like, yeah. I don't know if I should. Honestly, I've felt like that too. Like, yeah. I got some old ass shit that I'm like, why the fuck am I even, why is this on distribution? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like fucking pull this shit. Or like when, like, my homies will be playing it in the car and I'll just hear something like, oh man, I should have did this with that. Or like, I should have focused a little more on like, I should have put more reverb on this verse. Yeah. And, you know, it's just like little things like that. That's the nice thing about like being an artist. Like, you can release this song. And down the road, you'll probably realize, like, oh, I could have done that differently or I could have done this differently. Well, I was like, well, my next release, I'll just make sure to, like, take that information right. with me to the next song and, you know, do it even better. Yeah. The, and Yeah, the nice the nice thing about this uh, industry is, like, it's unlimited. Right. Like, there's no limit to how many songs you can drop within a certain time period unless you're signed, you know? Yeah. And that's so. that's crazy thing, too. Like, I... Lately, I've been kind of on a hiatus. My mm-hmm. last project was probably about uh, two years ago. Okay. But I haven't been quiet with the you know the singles. However, I think I've had like f- three or four within the past year or so. Okay. Kind of trying to build up a little bit momentum towards when I decide to release this album. Mm-hmm. So. She says your third album. It's well, fourth. Fourth it will album. be my fourth. Okay. Yes, because my last one was, I think it was in twenty twenty one. Okay. Melancholy Avenue. Okay. Yeah. So now for the viewers, yeah. who, who would you say that you sound like? Who could they look up and they'd be like, oh, that's like a similar sound? I've gotten comparisons to, I think one of my homies told me, he said I sound like Kendrick. Kendrick, a okay. Bit, a little bit. Just because like in a lot of my older songs, I was kind of trying to be like the lyrical type. I was mm-hmm. like spitting fast and, you know, 
So you're into like conscious type rap? A little bit, yeah. Okay. I, like like rappers that like they had bars and mm-hmm. punchlines. That's mm-hmm. kind of what I grew up on. But then now I think with this album that I got coming up, it's just me trying to kind of shift the focus, trying to show them that hey, I can do this too. You right. Know? And not just not just prove it to them, but prove to myself that I can really just go on any beat, go on any style, any sound, and I can just kill that. Okay. So now this new album is going to be more of like a totally different style, you would say? Totally different Okay. than any of my other projects. So I think my last one was like more like rap heavy, mm-hmm. kind of like mellow, mellow mm-hmm. vibes a little bit. This one's more of like a, like a pop mainstream kind of sound, like even... Yeah, like reggaeton. Okay. A little heavy on that. So. so you're trying to make like some radio hits or what's the goal here? Yeah, the radio hits. I guess you could say okay. that. Or they could be, you know, like TikTok friendly. Something or, marketable. Yeah, marketable, yeah. definitely. Honestly, I feel like after a certain point, if you're not making music that can be marketed and, you know, relatable to some extent, like obviously you should still have that creative individuality to it. Yeah. But at the same time, like... You could make a track, throw it on distribution, leave it alone, and you'll still get checks every month. Oh yeah, that's that's just c- from it being there, right? You know, so like, what happens if you make like one that's really relatable and viral material? Right now, you're collecting like big checks every month, and sometimes you don't even have to push that shit. You just make sure it's on all the platforms it needs to be on, and yeah, because like you can you can get a. Uh, you can get paid through um, YouTube's YouTube views. Oh yeah. You can get paid through Spotify views or not Spotify streams. You can get paid through TikTok views. Yeah. If you have it set up right. Right. You know. So. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and I've I've always had a dream to kind of like be more of like a mainstream kind of artist a little mm-hmm. bit. Like when I started out, like you could hear that I kind of have like a little bit of an underground. Type mm-hmm. of sound type of feel. Now it's just like, all right, I've made what I wanted to make. Now it's time to make something a little more for everyone. Yeah, I mean, enjoy. as long as it's still you, and you know, it doesn't matter like Definitely. what's what the the um the vibe is or like the feel of the song. Like I make all sorts of different right. sounding shit, and it's just like whatever you're feeling in that moment. Yeah, because there's a lot of artists that like stick to a specific sound. Yeah. And they're like, oh, man, I can't go out of my, no, nah, man, this is this is my vibe, like, take it or leave it kind of thing. It's like, yeah, but are you growing? Yeah. You know? And then, yeah, this, this I've always had been kind of, like, in my own comfort zone. And mm-hmm. I think with this upcoming project, and I think this should help get me out of it a little okay. bit. Okay. Yeah. So, like, how long have you been uh, making music now for? I think my first song I put out was probably... Oh, I'd say 2017, 2018. That was okay. my first song. And I think my first album came out probably right around that time, I think. So about, I'd say, five years maybe. Five or six? Yeah, five or six. Okay. You have any uh, cool music videos out or anything? No videos yet, but that will change. Oh, shit. You know, we got plenty of people that can do video work oh, around yeah. here. <laughs> I've, been, I've been wanting to link up with not just the – you know, photographers and all that, but like even some of these artists, like, you know, I've met, uh, you know, I got, uh, J Mac, Daz, mm-hmm. uh, TJT. I've met a lot of these guys. I got songs with a couple of them, but I've been really just wanted to, you know, kind of branch out and, you know, make some more music with them too. Mm-hmm. Cause like I've gotten, um, requests from like other people, like some guy I met, he lives in the cities. Mm-hmm. I got a song with him, um, on my last album. And then there's just some guy from Russia hit me up too. Oh, gotta love that. Yeah. <laughs> and the song itself is just weird because it's like all up in Russian up yeah. until you get to my verse. And that's just me spitting the most savage bars that I could spit possible. But it's just overall, it was a good. It was yeah, a good I did. Thing. I did a couple col- collaborations with people in Germany. Really? Like, uh, what is it? Amsterdam. Shout outs to uh, Baza Beats. Ooh. I did a song with Junior Neff. He just got locked up, apparently. Oh, wow. They had, like, a big going-away party for him in the U.K., so that was kind of cool. But uh, sucks that he got, you know, free my boy, Junior Neff. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, um, yeah, uh, 
I think it's really important to like you know branch out and be open to new ideas because you never know like you could make that song with that you know international person and it could just blow the fuck up in their country and now you're getting paid through you know royalties and all that shit so right. never um be afraid to like go out of your element a little bit because you never know where it's going to take you for sure for sure so um so do they have uh do the viewers have anything to look forward to besides that new album coming out um i think that's really all i've had now okay. <laughs> for the album uh just the album so far and uh you know I've, I've been out and about i've done a few shows here within the past couple of years mm-hmm. so uh you know see me catch me there you know tearing it up playboy mickey yes sir all right cool cool all right so we got to cut it but uh in closing anything you want to say to the viewers Oh, you got anything else you want to? Um, I don't think so. No, <laughs> that's why I'm like, you know, hey, I'm just feeling the vibe. Like, <laughs> unless you got another good question, I can yeah, probably answer. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, by the way, this episode has been brought to you by KGE Lifestyles Group. They are in charge of all of our video production for Space Pod TV. So, go check them out. KGLifestyles.com. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, yo. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Of course. I appreciate you. Playboy Mickey in the building, y'all. Thanks for having me. And that being said, MP- we out. MPMA coming soon. Hey, let's go. Peace. That was the wrong one. There we go. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>